Siberia, whose morals were rather inferior. He did to a nun what he shouldn't have done, and now she's a mother superior. <laughs> they get worse from now on. So, if the adults want to know the worst ones, they can meet me tonight in the bar, and I'll tell them. <laughs> in a well here in this little village. And just along here on the right is where the, the deed took place. You see what it says open there on the right, that sign. See the little square enclosed by a wall there? That's where the well was. And you can see on the far wall the figure of the bishop. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. And uh, he's holding the Bible in one hand and uh, his staff on the other hand. And you can also see that he's standing on a snake. Can you see the snake under his feet there? Yeah. 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 Because St. Patrick is reputed to have driven the snakes out of Ireland, you say. I was Queen Elizabeth I, because the man who was living in the castle at that time, his name was Corp of the Calvary, and his title, he was the Earl of Glarney. And he is said to have had an inexhaustible supply of answers and excuses every time Elizabeth wanted him to submit to her. Now, these uh, excuses were always accompanied by very funny entreaties regarding his beloved Majesty's health, and he couldn't give a damn about her at the same time. Now, this apparently had been going on for years. And every time her, when her representative was sent to get the copy to submit, he always came back with these excuses. Now on one occasion, a representative at that time was a man called Carew, and he went back to Elizabeth with more excuses from the county. And on this occasion, we're told that Elizabeth got into a towering rage. And uh, now, the title people, when they're talking to or about one another, they don't use the name, they use the title. She would never refer to him as McCarthy, she would refer to him as the Earl of Glamy. So on this occasion, Elizabeth got into a rage and she said, I'm fed up with this Glamy. What he says he does not mean and what he means he does not say. And we're told that that was the first use of the word in the English language. Now, how did this man McCarthy get this gift of eloquence? Well, we're not sure, probably bored with it. Now here they have a little story about it. They say that it goes back to the days when they used to bomb witches at the stake. Now in those days, if a, usually an old lady was suspected of being a witch, they had a very easy way of finding out whether she was or not. You see, what they would do is they'd tie her up and throw her into the nearest river or lake. Now if she sank to the bottom and drowned, she was innocent. But if she floated to the surface, she was guilty and was then propped at the stake, you see. It was a very easy way they had of finding out. Now, there was an old lady down in this area accused of being a witch. So they tied her up and threw her into the local river. And down she went to the bottom. So they said, she's innocent, and away they went home. 
But you see, she had some magical powers because she was able to survive on the water. And when they were gone, she came to the surface. And she was crying out for somebody to uh, untie her. But the count, he was on his way back to his castle and helped her cries for help. And he dragged her out and untied her. Now she said because he had done this kind act for her, it was now in her power to do something in return for him. Now, McCarthy had, was a very wealthy man, he didn't need wealth, but he had one problem. He suffered from a very bad speech impediment, called a stammer. Now, he was engaged, or he was going after a young lady in the city of Cork, but every time he tried to propose to her, he just couldn't get the words out, and she used to laugh at him. So he told this to the witch, and she said, no problem at all. And she told him about this stone that was up on top of the castle. And if he kissed this stone, uh, all his troubles would be over. So when he went up, he went to the top of the castle and caught a hold of this big stone and gave it a big smacker of a kiss. And lo and behold, he was now coming out with words and phrases that he didn't even know the meaning of. So he opened his horse and away with him into Cork and Char and the young lady. And shortly afterwards, they got married. And like all good fairy stories, they lived happily ever after. <laughs> but of course the truth of the historical side of what happened was that the county lost the castle in battle. Uh, the castle was then taken over by a local family here, a Cromwellian family. And uh, they married into another family called Coldhurst. And the castle to this day is in the hands of the Coldhurst family. Now, it's, it's a... a Oh, a lot of steps, winding steps, stone steps up to the top of the castle. And if you think that that would be too much for you, uh, there was another way of getting all the benefits of kissing the stone without going up there. You see, you wait, somebody who's been up there comes down, and then you kiss them and you have the whole thing by proxy, you see. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm sure Jerry has a voucher to cover everybody's entrance in there, so we'll... Yeah, we'll Axel Rose. <laughs> Do you want to? But someone take the, take the back <laughs> and we'll start walking. I'm just directing through here. <laughs> this is a Mazda, one, two, one. A lot of them here. Say something, Steph. Take one. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> Talk, Trevor. What's that? Trevor, I want to get a picture of you. Trevor. Trevor. Your cover's on. Your cover's on. I always do that. What's that? Hold on to Jim's hand. <laughs> Jen! Has <laughs> <laughs> been there filming the whole thing as we're as we're uh, laughing at them. Our face. <laughs> 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 now you kiss her, Norm. Lipstick <laughs> 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 right on there. Hey, I'm not getting lipstick on that wall. Hey, Bonner! No pathetic. I'm what? All right, Diane. You're scummy. Diane? Oh, yeah. I'm not doing it, I don't know. That was really scary. I don't know why I pay you to do something like this. Kill away! Kill away! Uh, the main industry here in Cork for quite a long time was uh, car assembly. The Ford Motor Plant had a, an assembly plant here, but it closed down about 10 years ago. Uh, Henry Ford's ancestors came from Cork, so he had a liking for the place. Uh, the local children here has a little rhyme about him. There was a little man called Henry Ford. He took a bit of tin and he took a bit of four. He took a drop of water and an old tin can and he tied them all together and the damn thing ran. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on one occasion he paid a visit here to Cork and uh, at that time they had just completed building a new hospital. So they went to Henry and they said, uh, Mr. Ford, uh, welcome to the city of your ancestors and we were thinking that because your ancestors came from here, you might like to donate some money to our new hospital. So Henry wrote out a cheque for a thousand pounds and gave it to them. That evening in the local newspaper, there was banner headlines, Henry Ford donates 10,000 pounds towards our new hospital. Then that evening they came to him and they said, sorry for the misprint, Mr. Ford. We'll have it rectified back to the thousand uh, pounds and the next edition. So Henry said, well, how much did this thing cost? So they said 10,000 pounds. 
So he said, give me that cheque. So he took the cheque and tore it up and wrote out one for £10,000. <laughs> now he said, I'll give you this, he said, on one condition. That uh, what's written up over the hospital, that I can decide what's written up there. And they said, certainly, Mr. Ford, anything at all you like. And if you go to that hospital to this day, you'll see written up over it. I came among you and you took me in. here now you have uh, O'Connor's funeral home and as we go through the lights if you look up to the left you'll see the hill rising your way up from us St. Patrick's Hill. Now there last year they, oh yeah there on the right hand side Falvey's pharmacy that's a shop um, what do you call it a drugstore? Yeah. Now last year a man died up that hill now in this country, when they're taking a coffin to the graveyard, uh, they usually pause outside the house where the person lived in all their lives, you see. Now, anyway, the hearse went off up along the hill, and you'll see how steep it is in a moment. And he stopped outside the house, but then when he went to take off again, uh, the hearse wouldn't take off. And he kept juddering it, but with all this juddering, didn't the door of the hearse burst open, the coffin flew out and came down the hill ahead of us there and straight in through the door of the chemist shop there on the right hand side and banged up against the counter and the lid flew off and the dead man sat up inside in the, in, 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 in the coffin and he said to the man behind the counter, for God's sake can you give me something to stop me coughing? <laughs> I told you to get worse. <laughs>
I'm saying left and right wheel tonight. We don't know tomorrow whether it's going to be a left wheel or a right wheel. We don't know which side of the road the reviewing stand is on. You listen carefully to me, please. When you come walking down, if it's over here, if it's over here, it's a left wheel. You're, this is left arm, okay? That's left wheel. If it's over here, it's right. Okay? Do you remember right? Right. Right. Bless yourself. Okay? Those of you, that's how I knew my right to those 17. Okay? You gotta know the right to the left. You just remember that. Okay? Now, you learn the words, you're gonna learn them by tomorrow. Now, I'll entertain one or two questions. Then we gotta move on. Yes. Obviously, what are you gonna say? Nova Scotia, Canada, please to meet you. How are you gonna know when to come back in? Can you see everybody else? That's what you're gonna hear. What if someone what if someone is only from you, Krishna? Okay? Thank you, Krista. I need the support. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yes. Um big instruments, what about their should they just stand still or should they be big instruments? Tools, tools. Good question. Pretty scary guys playing too bit here, man. They can carry them anywhere. They can climb walls. Well, they can scale walls with them. Okay, don't worry about that. Yes. Are we going to be always singing for all Nova Scotia when we're playing it too? No, we're always going to be playing it until we get to the reviewing stand. Okay, so we only sing okay? it once. If we're in a position where I think we should sing the thing, you can hear me. Okay. Okay. And this is the type of thing like we're in this for a little bit of fun here too. So there's nothing wrong with me yelling out, okay guys, we're going to sing. <laughs> when you hear me say, we're going to sing, what's your cue? One, two, one. Oliver Gay Mitchell, TD. And as he rides in splendid Lord Mayor's coach. Come on, Lou, let's give him a nice big warm round of applause as he steps from
here in March with 60 people. And they had such a wonderful time last year that we decided to join Dave again. And Dave is one of Boston's favorite radio personalities, and he is a passionate traveler. So it says an awful lot was here in Ireland that he came back again this year, and he looked forward to returning again next year. And as you can see, we have St. Patrick Charter. And this 15 foot high creation is the reset builders and brought to life by actor PJ Brady. Well known for his work on Patrick Charter.
were brought by Irish people since 1896. The floor here today represents a boxing ring, and the scene Sergeant Michael Crowe must be looking on there and remembering the halcyon days of the Olympic Games in 1992. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's give it an extra special. Oh, 
Ich muss mal. Um, just like St. Patrick's, which is just down the road, but this is the Anglican Cathedral of the city of Dublin, and at that time, uh, the walls of Dublin were all around here, and um, this was a cathedral which is built within the walls of the city. Um, one of, it contains very, tombs of various people, but principally uh, the tomb of a man called Strongbow, or Richard de Clare. And he was the leader of the Normans, or the Anglo-Normans, who came here uh, to help a king, the king of Leinster, the king of the east of the country, become king of Ireland. Uh, so in return, he was given many gifts of land. He was also given the daughter of the king of Leinster as his bride. And finally, he is buried with, within this church. It says 1198. And uh, that's the oldest pub of the city of Dublin. And uh, cross over the river to uh, the park, which is the Phoenix Park. High tide this morning. Um, the people of Dublin have a certain wit, and at times, where at low tide, they call the river the River Sniffy uh, because of the smell from the river at that time. It's, it's, um, it's just the, the rhyme between the two, the Liffy and the Sniffy. So, um, we're head up, up the river towards the park. You see the monument, the obelisk, straight ahead of us. Um, we'll be heading in around that obelisk and through the Phoenix Park. And that's our national drink. Um, the black beer that you see is, is the Guinness. Over on the right is one of the barracks, a, a military barracks, which is the oldest one in Europe. And indeed, there's still um, herds of deer at liberty, totally free here in the in the Phoenix Park. They don't come out of the park at all. No need for them. Um, you see the, the old gas lamps at each side of the street here. Um, these were restored as part of the movement for the millennium back in 1988 to celebrate the thousand years of the city of Dublin. These gas lights were restored and still operate. Just on our left hand side here you have the tallest obelisk um, do you use meters or feet? It's 65 meters, 65 meters high. And uh, this particular obelisk was built to honor a man who was born in Dublin, a man who's called the Duke of Wellington, who you may have heard from your history lessons. Um, in Principally because of the victory of the Duke of Wellington over Napoleon in the, at the Battle of Waterloo in 1815. And uh, this was built, started in 1817, and is the tallest obelisk um, in a city in Europe among the trees here on the left hand side as well so as I said they originally they were there for hunting uh, for the kings and the royalty English royalty um, but uh, I've since been there just still left there anyway in freedom over the, the park so this is the papal cross left here as I say in memory of <laughs> the Pope's visit to Ireland back in 79 you also see from here over towards the Dublin Mountains, which go on into the Wicklow Mountains. So, um, really, a half an hour from the city, people can be in the countryside, right out into the Wicklow Mountains, a very, very beautiful um, area. So messed up again last night. And we also have a visitor centre which is open to the public called the Guinness Hop Store. Uh, Dublin uh, comes from the Gaelic Dublin, which um, means black pool. And this was one of the settlements um, founded um, principally by the Vikings. Where it was Originally there were a few different settlements along by the river. So you had the black pool, you also had uh, the Balia Orhaclia, which means the bridge was erected in 1818. And for just over a hundred years, 
you had to pay half a penny or a halfpenny to cross this bridge, hence the name. But it's uh, just a walking bridge, linking two commercial areas. Realize that, but uh, probably not at the moment. The bridge is wider than it is long. Um, we're coming into the, as probably one of the most well-known names of the Daniel early 19th McConnell. century in Ireland. Uh, he was a man born in County Kerry, um, and at that time, up for about 300 years, laws existed in Ireland, which um, Stuart Parnell, and Parnell was the man who really fought for the rights of the tenants in Ireland, because right up until the end of the last century, the Irish people were tenants. They rented their houses. They weren't the there were laws which existed which um, didn't allow for people to earn or to own a lot of land. So what happened was the landlords were people who were called the <laughs> maternity hospital, um, called the rotunda. <laughs> that was the. It was founded by uh, back in the seventh. It's working out less costly just to send trucks over with, with uh, tanks of Guinness. So um, there. Unfortunately. Picture of this bathroom. Yes. Lovely John stepping in to the shower and sink <laughs> and toilet. These guys are back to Bonner! It makes him not too far. What? Lay down, lay down like Lay down like you were, Bonner. Down you go. It's starting to fade, the poor puppy. Oh, look at the face. There's Jennifer. And there's Ron. Hi. Diane. Donna. Jan. Mike. And Leanne. There's John, yeah. Alan. Hi there, how you doing? Oh. And Eileen. <laughs> Top of the evening to you. And this is Norm. <laughs> Priscilla. Especially. And this is the end of the dinner. Yes. See you, Norm. Norm in front of the sideboard. Norm? Norm in front. I got the pink one when we jumped out today. Mm -hmm. Remember there was the uh, doors and I, I ran across? One. Well, I took the two. Maybe. 
coming down the escalator, I'll get a picture of it coming back. Hmm. I like the ducks. Whiskey labels. Oh yeah. Yes. Be nice for a bar. Yes. Yes. Say hi to the folks at home. Hi there, folks at home. <laughs> <laughs> Keith, this is no time to be shy. <laughs> What's the problem? <laughs> No, no, that's what I'm here for. Okay, smile, everybody here. There. Zoom, super close up. Woo! Is that going to be on the uh, <laughs> Say hi to everybody at home. Andrew Killowee, smile for the camera. Great time. Tell us about your trip to Ireland, ladies. It was, it was fun. lots of fun. What did all we those we went in? And all those pubs we went in. <laughs> yeah, right. The real spirit of Ireland. We, we had a taste of Ireland. Do you have fun? Do you have fun? Do you have fun? I had a great time. But I'm certainly. Is your honeymoon, Jen? Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> we went to bed early every honey day. Honeymoon with the 88 kids. I bet you it was fun. Yeah. There's no problem. I've either. never gotten so much sleep as I did on this trip. <laughs> <laughs> that was a huge competition we were in. We like beat up like hundreds of fans. <laughs> and we got the most important award in the parade. You know, the most important one. Okay. Hi. So hi to everybody at home. I have no, I'm not everybody at home is here. I don't want That's to go right. Home. Go home. No. I'll come home with you. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us ladies about all the stuff that you bought in Ireland. I bought way too much. I bought way, way too much. Way, way too much. Too much. Way, way too much. I got nothing left. I mean, it seems like I bought nothing. What'd you guys buy? Nothing. I bought my limit. <laughs> That's all I know. Is there no money left? No, I don't. I like it. What I bought? I bought $200 worth of 
And you? How are these? And I bought a really nice sweater at Blarney Mills. Or or something. And I got a piece of water for Crystal for my mom. All kinds of other stuff. Okay, Amy. Um, I bought a blanket, and jewelry, and pins, and um, stuff for my brother, and books, and um, that's it. That's good. Okay. Emmy? What? What'd you buy? Not much. Tell us about your adventures, but about getting kissed by women and stuff like that, and spit on, and that sort of thing. Oh, no, that's okay. <laughs> okay, ladies, tell us what you bought in, in uh, Ireland. What's this? Sweater. Want to show it to us? What'd you buy? Buy your phones. I bought the shirt too. Sandy broke my raw raw, and I have to fix it. <laughs> What'd you buy? Nothing. You didn't buy that sweater? No, this is Aaron O'Higgins sweater. Oh. She didn't have the packet, so I told her I'd wear it. Oh, that's good. What did you buy in Ireland? It was wonderful. What did you buy? Um, new hair. New hair? <laughs> yes, nice new haircut. Um, not much else. And what'd you buy? Nothing? <laughs> that was worth it. <laughs> and I lost my camera. What? And I lost my camera. Oh, I'm sorry. I've done that before myself. Thank <laughs> you. 